So we do have CEOs uh, who will deliver the IR pitch. Uh, please make sure that you wear the mic uh, for the presentation. If you are the presenter, please uh, come to the back of the stage uh, to wear the mic so that you can later present. Thank you. We will soon begin the session. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we will now begin the entrepreneurship busking. My name is Lai Yong Nan. I will be the MC of this session. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you very much. So uh, we are here at uh, Try Everything 2023, and the session is titled Entrepreneurship Busking, where we will identify CEOs with brilliant ideas and we very much look forward uh, to the ideas uh, that will shine through the session. And allow me to introduce the jury panel. Uh, when I call out their names, please give them a big hand. Uh, from Skip Lab, Mr. Kim Song Shin, uh, thank you very much and welcome. And from Venture Field, Mr. Tong Ji Wu, welcome and thank you for joining us today. And from Kickstart Investment, uh, Mr. Park Song Yu, thank you very much. And from M Emotional Lab, uh, Mr. Yang Dong Mo, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, last but not least, like a local, Mr. Han Song Jung, thank you very much for joining us today. Yes, uh, I ask for your fair judging. Now we will begin the IR presentation. So five minutes for presentation and five Q&A uh, will be given uh, to each presenter. First and foremost, Mr. Kim Jun Young will present. Uh, please give him a big hand. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kim Jun Young from InHeart. So I will now begin the presentation. So I will be brief. So it is a wireless EKG diagnosis system. So back in 2019, we uh, started the company. And in 2020, uh, together with large universities, we were able to uh, conduct clinical uh, trials, but because of COVID-19, um, the project fell through. But then we still worked very hard, and now well, we are in the rediscussion stage. So we have never 
uh, given up. We have been dedicated and we have been working very hard and uh, we have not uh, sit idly by. Uh, we have provided mentoring to many other companies and we learned in the process. So we are about to become a startup company, but uh, we still provided uh, some consultation services and uh, with that uh, we were able to come this far. So thank you very much for your help and support. So uh, without you, I wouldn't be able to be here. Now to jump into uh, the main discussion topic, why do people die? Heart disease is actually the leading cause of death in all countries except Africa and East Asia. Then let us dive deeper because the golden hour, uh, which is four minutes, is not met. So uh, the survival rate after cardiac arrest is only 8.6%, and the remaining people will lose their precious lives. And uh, actually, in Korea, we have 46.4% uh, of those who died. Um, they were due to three major causes of death, which is cancer, heart disease, and cerebrovascular disease. And and uh, EKG actually uses a lot of cables, about 10 in Korea, and uh, in US about 16, including the one on your back. So we wanted to reduce all the time and the wires as well. So these are some of the challenges. Uh, the cable untangling is time consuming, and then risk of cutting wire while cutting off patient's clothes. And you have to be quick on your feet. So it is not easy to find the right place in the States, like it's too heavy to move, or device may fail during defibrillation process and uh, replacement with hospital wire requires even more additional time. Then what would be the solution? We have the one in China. So wire is not required for the device itself, but they still need cables. What about Apple Watch? We call it one node, so it's like using two cables, and because it uses that approach, it's not precise enough as a medical device. Then how can we improve this? So we conducted research on that and we went 100% wireless. So this means it is compatible regardless of machine, even if the input and output terminals are all different. So these are the five major players in this market. So every year you see like these devices uh, that you have to use to connect all the cables. But then uh, by using this solution, we can actually go wireless and then we can actually um, become compatible with other devices as well. We have completed the software and hardware um, development uh, and compared to to wired um, before the efficiency rate was only 70%, but then we pulled that up to 93%. But then 96 to 97% uh, should be hit to go through clinical uh, trials. So we are now working on improving this data and this number. And uh, the goal is this, uh, to increase the survival rate by quickly providing emergency treatment to many heart disease patients in a safe environment. So we met many people responsible in this field and we gained confidence along the way. However, we still have some hurdles to overcome. Like if you look at Korea, uh, paramedics uh, actually cannot um, attach EKG. It's illegal. But then still, the first responders or paramedics in Korea measure EKGs at the risk of paying fines, uh, even from Busan to Seoul and across the country. So now uh, the law might be amended anytime soon. But anyways, uh, that's the expectation. And the selling price would be about $700. And then uh, we expect the market size to hit uh, $720 billion and OP about $100 million. And if we cannot do it in Korea, we plan to go overseas especially the U.S. market. So this would be the milestone uh, market study to circuit design up to funding and participation in fairs. And this is the authentication certificate, and this is our team. With that, I would like to wrap up. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you very much for keeping the presentation to the time limit of five minutes. Do we have any questions? Yes. Thank you very much for the presentation. So you talked about the market size, the expected market size, and um, 
what would be your first uh, target? Who would be your first target? And how did you come up with this number? Well, first uh, we plan to target hospitals. But then, well, for that, we did not have uh, many time limitations. But anyways, uh, we drilled down to paramedics and at the same time, the fire stations. So those would be our first target groups. Yes, thank you very much. Now moving on to the next question. Well, actually, now you haven't uh, been done with the um, improving the statistics or you haven't been you you're still working on that elaboration but then now you showed us the milestones so what would be the consistency rate well i'm not sure whether i understand your question but then like uh, compared to the existing ones i said uh, 93 percent uh, is the accuracy rate or the stats and uh, to go um, for medical devices it has to be 96 to 97 percent so we have a long way to go but then for the past three years uh, we boosted 23 percent so uh, we need to have uh, or gain clinical data which are accurate and time uh, will be of the essence here Yes, uh, did that answer your question? Well, thank you very much. Uh, do we have another question? Yes. So what about the sales vendors locally and globally? Any plans about uh, the sales vendor network, uh, um, I, like sales channels? Well, as for Korea, we don't have a network yet. Uh, we are now working on the clinical uh, trials. Um, we are at that stage. And in the States, we have Cleveland uh, Clinic, uh, which is the number one clinic for cardiac arrest. And uh, they actually invest in uh, solid technologies and help them grow. And uh, they showed us, uh, they showed a lot of interest in us. And uh, Medigens is another company uh, which uh, is an angel investor. And uh, we are now under discussion. So I believe uh, with that, we will begin expanding the sales network. Yes, thank you very much for that. That brings an end to the first presentation. Thank you very much. Give a big hand to Mr. Kim. So please step down from the podium. So we will move on to the next picture, which will be given by Kim Kyung-min from Rivers Mountain. I would like to invite him to the stage. Please welcome with a big round of applause. Shall I begin? So, we produced the TikTok service for the motivated uh, meeting system. In order to do the right meeting, you need to create or uh, discuss the meeting agenda and allocate action plan and do the follow up performance management. However, because of the efficient meeting system, costs are wasted. According to the Bloomberg, because of the inefficient meetings, it costs $350,000 per person. So we did an interview with the people in the industry and, it, and asked what kind of meeting tools do you use? And most of the same, 50% uh, of them said that they use a note and pencils. And even those who use the ocean said that they only do the meeting for the sake of the meeting, failing to the follow the perform, I mean, keeping the track of the performance of each individual. So we focus on to resolve three things. First is the meeting process. Before the meeting, the agenda is not much shared. So uh, when the meeting started, they started to discuss what the agenda of the meeting is about. So the meeting does not go as planned and they fail to reach an agreement on the action plans and just do the next round of meeting. And even if they find a consensus on the action plan, they don't know what kind of work they need to do because the only one who participated in the meeting knows how the meeting uh, has been preceded. And finally, the performance management, which is quite critical these are days. Even if they want to do the tracking of the performance, they don't know what the details of the meeting. So unless they are called by their supervisor, they don't share the details of the performance management shared in the meeting. So we decided to produce the service called the Tiki Taka. It intends to improve the process of the meeting and also make a data out of the action plan so that it can be shared uh, company-wise or the department-wise. Also, based on the data, it can motivate the employees to manage, uh, manage and maintain their performance.
So before the meeting, the participant of the meeting received the agenda and the minutes of the previous meeting, and by using Gmail, those who are not joined the Tiki Taka can receive the information as well. Also, the host of the meeting can send the reminder as well. During the meeting, by using STT and AI system or an ability, uh, they don't need to feel the pressure of writing the minutes. And after the meeting, they can set the action plan, and the person in charge of such each action plan can join the system and get the allocation of the works. And it will be synced to the to-do list, and the employer employers can access to each action plan and keep the track of it, and all the team members can access to it as well and to see the status of the work. Finally, by using this data, you can motivate your employees and maintain their performance. You can leave the feedback on the page, or you can have a one-on-one -on meeting with this synchronized data. And also, like the movie ending credit, you can give the credit to each participant to motivate them further. Finally, these data, this whole data of the employees or their performance data can help the companies to better make this, uh, make the better decision and that is our future plan. So far, uh, these are the achievements we made. Since the launch of MVP, we produced a uh, revenue of 7 million and it helped them to save 20 hours per month in terms of the meeting duration and it was 12 hours and per month. Uh, the services are basically free of charge. However, the free uh, description does not provoke. Uh, uh, if you join the free subscription, you need to open your information to the, all the people within a specific team member. And if you want to be confidential, you need to pay at least 5000 per month. After the launch of uh, November, we plan to uh, increase the subscription number up to 130, and we plan to increase it further to 5000 by 2024, uh, gaining the 3 billion revenue. One thing we need to pay attention to is that the sauce market has been increased substantially. HR sauce market has a lot of rivals, but when it comes to the performance management, there are no stale players, so I think the market is still promising. Finally, let me introduce our team members. I previously worked for the finance manager management company and I managed the portfolio and back then I needed to maintain and keep the track of the performance of my employees so that is the background of the development and also Mr. Shim Dong-si from the Seoul National University is working as a CTO to back us and Mr. Kim dong won was previously worked for the consulting company called the Walt Company I mean Valus Consulting Company and he's now working with, as a CMO finally Chen Chi Jun previously worked for the influencer management work and now he is working as a sales manager. Thank you so much for your kind of listening. Thank you so much for your presentation. That was from the Lewis Mountain and if you have any question, please any. Thank you so much for your presentation. So there are much industries you need to target and uh, you expected the revenue will be increased up to 3 billion. Where the revenue will come from and what kind of focus plan do you have? Are you talking about the target customers? Yes. Based on the data so far, our services will be mostly targeted on the three sectors. First, professional consulting firm will use our service because they can reduce the meeting time substantially. And startups, because startups usually do the business in the form of projects, which means that one person needs to deal with multiple tasks at the same time. So it will help them to manage the work in a more systematic manner. Finally, the new TF Force team of a large company or smaller company, they paid a lot of interest in it, as the example shows. Uh, the DVINC new task force uh, has been reviewing the possibility of adopting our service. I actually have a question as well. So you said that this is a HR SARS service and there were many rival players. So how do you allocate the action plan? Can you explain it further? How do you allocate the action plans? And you talked about the technology aspect of it and STT and AI were the only thing mentioned in your presentation. So you must have a lot of data on STT powered by the AI. Do you have other functions as well? Can you explain it further as well? And finally, in order to create an action plan, you need other kinds of data as well. So how do you secure those kind of data? 
Basically, when you join our system, there are weekly meeting and project-based meeting, and the outcome must be produced in the form of action plan. For example, these are the actions we will do in this week. And the participant can click the join button to get the allocation of action plan. At the same time, all the data from the weekly data are synced with the total list of each individual so that they can share the work status and task status that is a function of our system. Actually, if you see the demonstration of data, you'll be better understand the details of the system. In case of STT, actually, we don't create an algorithm by ourselves. We use the open source AI solutions, and also there is a STT solution provider called the Dagalo. So we outsourced the service with them so that we can improve the efficiency of our service. So here you have two minutes more. Is there any final question? Actually, many SAR service providers have a interlinked API, API system which create a synergies and I think the same goes to your system as well. So among the existing system, which product makes the biggest synergy with your product? Whether it is a back on or front on, and we use a Google language, G Gmail, Google Calendar, and Workplace are all synced to our systems. We're talking about meetings and HR SARS, and this is quite a limited scope of work. So whenever we meet our clients, they always ask a question whether they can connect the system to the compliance. So ASA, compliance, or SWIT are the, some of the recommendations we will give, and the, those kind of services will create a synergy effect with us. Thank you so much for your final answer. Please give another round of applause to the CEO of Libras Mountain. Yes, uh, thank you very much for uh, Tiki Taka introduction. Now we will move on to the next uh, presentation uh, from Joint Ventures. Mr. Oh Kwan Song will present. Please give him a big hand. Yes, good afternoon. So I'm here to present you. Bolly B, a professional facial expression management solution that you can enjoy in the comfort of your home. So thank you very much for having me here. So these days, what matters is to provide a good impression. And as you can see here, seven out of the 10 people in the 20s and 30s are willing to undergo plastic surgery or non-operational cosmetic procedure to reshape facial expressions to land or transfer to a new job. However, a lot of plastic surgery professionals say that giving a good impression requires so much more than just plastic surgery or non-operational cosmetic procedure. And uh, all humans have the 43 facial expression muscles. And depending on which expressions you make, uh, sometimes some muscles will develop or form in a certain manner. And uh, depending on that, uh, you will get a sagging face or you will get deeper wrinkles. And that will give you a bad impression. So you have to understand what impressions you make in your everyday life. And then at the same time, you have to look at uh, how to be careful to not lose volume. But then sometimes, you know, you're in a hurry and uh, you um, get negative consequences. So professional training is what is recommended from the professionals. However, visiting clinics may not be an option because of finance, time, and distance-wise, uh, it is not just uh, efficient. So uh, most of the time, you have to look up the information for yourself, but then still you hit a lot of limitations in terms of uh, time, consumption, and so on and so forth. So what we provide, uh, we provide a facial expression habit-building service that offers personalized training plan and manages habits. And it is called well be. So the professional care will be provided in the app, and it's an all-in-one uh, all service uh, provided uh, to the users. So, like, it will diagnose, you know, um, how you use your uh, muscles, and it will also use 18 different items uh, to look at uh, the muscle movement and provide precise diagnosis. And then uh, you will have a one-on-one -on -one coach who will walk you through how to better use your facial muscles and uh, actually a virtual coach uh, will be linked here and synced uh, to improve and boost the efficiency and accuracy of the training. At the same time, at the end of the day, we can, uh, once we have the built 
data, then we can use that data to replan and provide a better solution to the users. So we can log and monitor facial expression change along time. So we are now developing the service uh, and receiving advice and consulting uh, services uh, from experts and we're working on identifying the partners and we have conducted a survey on this application and the majority uh, was uh, quite positive about the launch of this service so we have a subscription model uh, consisting of three tiers depending on diagnosing the body part and management approach and uh, this is our target group uh, women in their 20s and 29 and uh, we are looking at job seekers and it will be about uh, 1.7 million and at the end of the day we plan to expand that to those using healthcare services we haven't launched the service yet so this year uh, the goal is to launch the service and better service uh, is likely to be launched uh, uh, next year and once we develop the beta service and then we convert um, the testers to users so we plan to actually uh, boost uh, the number of BP to about uh, 10,000 uh, by 2024 Q4. So this is our team and we all learned our lessons uh, during our past experience. So we are fast but we are accurate and in the process uh, we are building uh, this app. So not just about sales, I believe that uh, a great app can really transform your lives. So it's not just about, uh, you know, helping people develop uh, good expressions, uh, but we want to enrich their lives and really be able to enjoy their everyday life. And that is our mission. And I truly hope uh, that the uh, entrepreneur busking will help us uh, along this way. So this has been Ugan Sok from Rally B of joint ventures thank you very much for your time yes thank you very much now we will uh, jump into the q a thank you very much for the presentation so what about market validation are you complete with that no not yet what about mvp about 90 percent then once you complete mvp and you develop like test product it will be about validating your hypothesis and what is your hypothesis well when it comes to good impression we see rising demand and uh, our core uh, market i said uh, women uh, between 20 to 29 especially job seekers and uh, slow aging is an emerging trend and slow aging also targets the same age group or population as us so it's about an preventation uh, measure it's not just about uh, developing a uh, good facial expressions but i do believe that uh, it will lead to a significant result well you know please relax don't need to panic here okay now there are many platforms uh, that want to provide solutions and uh, actually how you're going to attract um, customers into the application is key so like a lot of youth startups uh, really focus on uh, the diff different uh, methodologies but then you know what would be the exposure rate and how many of them do you plan to bring into the application because uh, we need to have like this um, revenue happening on its own organic revenue to bring in customers at the end of the day well i believe that marketing will be essential so we are working on that and uh, based on digital prototype uh, we conducted a survey and uh, there was a lot of need uh, for free testing so we want to make sure that uh, we offer enough time for that um, and then we go through validation and we secure customer base so that is the plan uh, thank you very much for the presentation 
Well, you have to drive change of the user behaviors that would be key to your success. So once you actually convert them to users, uh, you said, uh, I think it was about uh, 4,900 or so. Anyways, is that uh, the, well, you know, how did you come up with that uh, expense? Is it uh, how much the target customers usually spend? Well, for MVP, we developed a prototype and for subscription model, uh, we also conducted a survey and asked a question about the subscription model. So we uh, took into consideration the conversion rate from free to paid, and uh, at the end of the day, we were able to obtain that number, 4,900. So, like we have similar services in the market, and once you, when you receive like consulting services, how much do they spend on a monthly basis, on average? So it's about thirty thousand up to one hundred and fifty thousand uh, Korean won per service, and uh, we do have like uh, other. Um, in app services uh, in other countries like massage services but they are all global applications and uh, so it's not user friendly because of course there is this language barrier so we want to provide a um, customized local application for the korean users yes uh, we have less than one minute uh, can you please be brief yes uh, you talked about the user process so it was they go through like testing and then diagnosis. So is that in-app service as well? The examination to diagnosis? Yes, um, the examination will be enough uh, to identify uh, what this user um, goes through in terms of facial expressions or what he or she needs to improve. So uh, we will be using image data to um, like uh, read the contour of the face as well as the uh, facial expressions of the user and based on the examination report, like, you know, for instance, a symmetry or the volume or different parts of the face, um, these will be analyzed. So, um, and then categorized into three different diagnoses. So management is needed or okay or not okay. But so anyways, uh, we have like this virtual care. So is it like uh, automated, uh, like the generation, is that automatically generated for the users to follow the uh, facial expressions? Well, we are working on a virtual human and uh, on top of that, uh, we plan to also develop uh, different uh, personas uh, so that uh, users can have fun and uh, really engage in the platform. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you very much. So that was uh, Welly B, a new facial expression management service uh, application. Next is Mr. An Beng Lee from Chunyeon Sikyang. I'd like to invite him to the stage, please. Welcome with a big round of applause. I brought a uh, test food for you. So she prepared a prototype food and that surprised some of the judges. Please welcome with a big round of applause once again. Hello everyone. For the first time in Korea, we create a meat substitute for the Korean cow. So my name is An Bang Nim and thank you so much for your invitation. My company name is Chunyeon Sikyang. Hot bar, pizza, and sin ramen. I must you have tested once or more, and there are so many alternative proteins, and these three millionaires invest in it to save the carbon. So out of 700 kilograms, meat, 60% sold as it should be, and 92% of it are wasted or sold as a secondary meat. So cow is the number one carbon producer, and despite the economic damage caused by it, because of the health reason, it's very difficult for us to uh, do away with 
the mid. I'm a mid lover, so it is very challenging for me and even unrealistic for me to do away with mid. So that's why I decided to make a mid substitute. And because of the three reasons, mid substitute has been very difficult to replace the Korean cow because it was seen as a false brand and because of the chemical savory and the poor marbling, people not preferred it. 60% of the meat in the market are minced, mar uh, minced meat. But as you know, Beyond Meat, Impossible Meat are all minced meat. So they are very tender, of course. So there are only two service providers who produce the steak type meats. Actually, when I tested in Europe, it, the texture was very nice, but the taste was like a Can you hear, hear it clear? So, actually, they received an investment, investment of 5.9 billion. We, we used a 3D modeling technology to create a modeling of the steak. So, we, I brought a steak with very little fat, and also we, pat, we got patented for the meat with 47% uh, of the fat. And according to the international, I mean national food cluster, our product was very close to actual meat. And also we did a blind testing and the satisfaction was very close to that of Korean cow. Also, there are so many meat substitutes that can be created with uh, mushrooms. And uh, we worked with the chemical service provider to create a Korean cow like we substitute. Also, we create an eco friendly packaging. We use the wasted bulk of a tree. And this is the disc shaped packaging. And we plan to make a meal package out of it. So, for the first time in the world, we create a meat substitute for the Korean cow. And the unit uh, cost was uh, 400. Thousand in the past, but we reduced it by 40%. And we also improved and enhanced the branding, branding of the service. Over the last seven years, we received the feedback, and though, though most of them were very positive, I almost thought that this is just actual meat. That, that is some of the feedback we received. Actually, non vegan preferred our food more than the meat lovers. Our first market to target is as it was loved by many foreign people. We plan to sell it to to the gourmet market outside of Korea. In case of Korea, we, for, we plan to focus on the dining and, and the B2C market, like a market colleague. Whole food and the future food are the, our future plans, and within a few months, we plan to have a meeting in the U.S., and our revenue target is $1 billion per month. And 60% of meat are consumed either by the, uh, will be replaced with a meat substitute, and social values, young chef, and secondary livestock products are all embedded in our product. If you use it instead of actual meat, it is it's, it's like uh, taking a public uh, transportation instead of taking uh, driving your own car. Also, our members are both cook and science. So they are capable of making an outcome qualitatively and quantitatively, and we are very nimble. We are working with many global mem uh, globally renowned experts, and I'm also part of the Seoul Research Institute, and I'm also part of the PhD course to make the meat substitute. We plan to change people's perspective on the meat substitute and thereby reduce the carbon emission. Thank you so much for your presentation, and uh, let us begin the Q&A session without further ado. Thank you so much for your presentation. Actually, we have a great interest in meat substitute more than outside of Korea than in Korea. And the research is very active also outside of Korea more than so in Korea. So this meat substitute, how mature it is when compared to others developed outside of Korea. And 
you said that you had a meeting in the U.S. and in the case, so are you at the stage of commercializing already? Actually, the actually I will hold it in my hands. So actually, the outcome of the task came out today. And it means that we can have a serial number for the item approver, and we also apply for the uh, plant establishment in the U.S. Once it is approved, we can readily export the fruit. fruit. In possible meat, there are so many good rivers in the U.S. However, they produce minced meat or sausage sausage type meats, and that accounts for only 40 percent of the meat market. So we can cover the remaining 60 percent by making a steak type meat. So given that, I believe that we can kind of the dominate market. And next question. My question is that what about the storage or the transportation? When condition change, does it impact uh, affect the taste and the texture of your meat? Actually, we create that kind of savory out of fermentation. When it's fermented, the taste only gets better, like a wine. So it is like a aged meat. So. You cannot maintain the same savory continuously. Of course, if you add the preservatives, that you will test the preservatives as well. So we plan to make a natural aging of the meat so that it can taste better when it once it is aged. Next question. My question is that what about the mass production? It's possible to mass produce, and you plan to target the U.S. market. So what kind of services, what kind of market you can reach? So the equipment we have can produce up to 300 kilogram per day. So in terms of production, I'll be, it would be more than sufficient at the early stage. If we want to expand the capacity, we need to get more investment for that expansion. What was the second question? You target the U.S. market. So what kind of services you plan to cover just the product or mass production? I brought a meal kit package. So as a meal kit package, it can be sold for the household cooking. And in case of B2B, I can uh, individually sell meats only. And in Korea, we have a flagship store where we can improve our reputation. And so we have a restaurant that direct sell, directly sells the meat substitute we produce. And we have one minute remaining. Any comment from judges? You said that you are working for the research institute as a researcher developing meat substitutes. So does, it, does this technology owned by a research institute you work for or the company own this technology? So what about the IP? Do you need to acquire IP from the research institute? Actually, I have six patents and 20 for trademarks and everything 100% are owned by my company. Seoul National University Research Institute do not have any ownership whatsoever. Thank you so much for your answer. And that is everything for the third speaker. Please give her another round of warm applause. Thank you very much. Yes, you talked about uh, your product, which can contribute to carbon footprint reduction. Thank you very much for that. Next, we will hear from Career Able. Yes, uh, let us welcome him with a big hand. Please come up to the stage. Yes, uh, hello. So I want to really innovate uh, the job-seeking market. Uh, my name is Kang Dae-hyung. So it takes a lot of money to get prepped for to get a job. And here, as you can see here, the cost is about uh, 6 million. And uh, I am a journalist slash product owner. And I really worked hard uh, to land these jobs. And I spent a lot of money. And then I wasn't sure whether I was doing the right job because I didn't have a lot of uh, human network at the same time. 
time, one-on-one -on -one counseling or tutoring was not uh, possible, but it wasn't just my experience. As you can see here, 84.5% of job seekers had trouble uh, collecting information because they do not have the right people near themselves. And uh, if you live outside of the metropolitan cities, it becomes more difficult because they feel left out. And uh, we do still have a lot of people who have the need uh, for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So we do have many services for one-on-one -on -one, uh, private tutoring, but then they have limitations. So uh, they do not have or offer an in-house platform. So you have to use another third-party platform at the same time. It's not easy to keep log of the information. And you only use like uh, other third-party chat services. So real-time communication is not uh, feasible. So we need to be able to use uh, not just voice, but also text messages within one single platform. And we do see a rising demand for among the current and former employees as well. They have a desire to earn additional income by sharing their job seeking experience. So that's what we want to do. We want to match uh, the job seekers to the current and former employees. So the current and former employees uh, can provide uh, their experience to the job seekers. And um, also, we can address the need uh, of the job seekers uh, who want a one-on-one -on -one private uh, tutoring. And then uh, the current and former employees don't have to be fully dedicated to this job, so it won't give them a lot of burden. So this is the big data matching system that we plan to employ. So we can find the right person for one another. So we match one-on-one. -on -one, and then Saltai product uh, owner was actually my previous job. And uh, based on that experience, uh, I do provide this service. And then after matching, this is what we offer. So on this platform, they can actually real-time communicate. Uh, they can exchange tests, uh, texts and voice messages in real-time. So there is no information lost in between, and uh, it's quite interactive. And of course, we do see clear demand among the MZ uh, generation about uh, success-driven private tutors. And this is the market size. Especially, uh, I plan to begin with the job seekers who seek to land a job in media and then expand the market to the larger audience. And this is uh, how I plan to expand to new occupational groups. And this is what's happening, and this is the process. And 33% would be the commission. And, uh, we we also have an income source uh, from the selling of the uh, tutoring books. And we plan to expand this to B2B model. Of course, we do have some players in this market, but uh, not a single one provides one-on-one -on -one private tutoring on a single platform. So in terms of convenience and uh, communication, I do believe that we have strength. And on top of this, uh, well, this can continue forever. So it can be uh, very sustainable. So let's say like uh, we identified uh, the feasibility of one-on-one -on -one tutoring and then after launch uh, the sales was about uh, 3.58 uh, million Korean won. So uh, we do see hints of success. And uh, for some of the uh, job seekers, uh, we saw them being converted to actual users. And then we are also using some um, postings uh, to recruit the former or current uh, employees. And we plan to be aggressive with marketing Marketing and the size of uh, revenue for 2024, while well, the expectation is 270 million Korean won. And this is the list of the partners that we have outside of the company. And uh, well, I would like to talk about myself. I was the valedictorian for Seoul National University uh, Social Education Department. And then this is our team. As you can see here, we all have extensive experience uh, in education. So please give us the wings and then we can, I believe, uh, fly further. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Now we'll move on to the Q&A. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a question. So you said former and current employees, uh, so, um, you know, they can be past employees. So would they be able to offer valid uh, knowledge? 
And then how are you going to uh, control the quality of the tutoring? Well, the former and current employees means, you know, those who have experience in this field. So they might have uh, actually overcome the hurdles before and landed a job in that field. And in terms of um, the quality, we provide the content and curriculum of the training in advance, and then they can they actually do some demo um, teaching, and we call them actually mentors and mentees. And then what we also do is we also receive satisfaction level uh, from the mentees of their mentors. And if the satisfaction rate is low, then we will provide additional training to the mentors. Yes, thank you very much for that. So uh, the target group will be quite specific or narrow uh, when you first begin in the service, uh, what would be your primary target group and also lab app learning model and uh, actually the rate was 33%. Uh, so, you know, how did you come up with the number? Can I please go back to my previous slide? No? So what was your first question? Your primary target. So we will begin uh, with the job seekers for media because I you know, am a journalist by background. So they will be our uh, first uh, primary target uh, and we will be proofreading their texts. And then moving on, uh, the webtoon writers will be the next uh, uh, target and also I talked about the uh, voice messaging as well. So we plan to expand to broadcasting like show host as well as uh, consulting service um, providers as well as other um, broadcast uh, MCs and then we will expand further and about the 33% it was not a definite number. So we have like the job seekers and then we said let's say that we provide you a one hour tutoring and how much are you willing to pay and then uh, most of them said uh, about 45,000 to 50,000 and when we asked the same question to the mentors, uh, we, they said uh, 30,000. So we did the math and then we came up with 33%. So 33% did not come out of the blue. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, do we have one final comment? Yes, I have one question. So at the end of the day, so the key to your service would be to extract the right data and then to match the mentors to the mentees. And then how do you plan? Well, how do you extract such a data? the preference data, and then how do you plan to exactly match the mentors and mentees? So upon subscription and then about uh, the uh, tutoring duration, you know, to the mentees, I, we would ask questions about the uh, class style or the tutoring style or, you know, their preference and this and that. And then, you know, uh, we will ask the gender as well as uh, the teaching style to the mentors as well. And then we have a specialist uh, working on that. So so for now, we have over 30 matches and then it's still up and running. Yes, uh, thank you very much for that answer. Yes, thank you. Uh, please give him a big hand. So that was Kang Dae-hyo from Korea Bowl. And next, I'd like to invite Kim Jong-soo from Perfume today. Please welcome with a warm round of applause. Back in 2021, during the pandemic, what was the product that was most loved by the customers? That was Tassi from Aesop. With a rich, earthy, fragrant, and citrus fragrant, people liked it. Do you want to smell it? You can smell it in 50 stores across the country. But even if you have a lot of stores, it's very difficult for you to uh, smell the scent of it. So over the last two years, we decided to deliver the contents and the fragrance to the customers. And actually, the sales were exceeded our expect expectation. We sold over 370,000 pieces of the fragrance card, and we learned what kind of uh, fragrance people prefer based on the data. But the problem 
fundamentally it was not tackled because we were in, we understood that from the customer's behavior. Customers usually uh, get recommendation and try out the fragrance, and there are certain pattern in it. And at, in the physical office, they can respond to those kind of preference very nimbly. However, it is almost impossible to increase the number of the offices limitlessly. So that's why people want to uh, solve that kind of issue online, but on, in the online web store, it is very difficult to test out the fragrance and the conversion rate is quite low accordingly. So we decided to tackle this issue. We provide a pre-ration service. Let, let me tell you what pre-ration service is. Let's say that this is the official web of website of the brand and you, you, uh, people can access to this recommendation page. For example, what kind of clothes do you want to wear in the blind meeting and what kind of image you want to appeal to your potential partner and you can answer to this kind of multiple questions and they can get the recommendation for the best fit fragrance. And if they want to try this out, they can click the button to get the delivery and this is a total solution we provide. So this is such a nice solution. Uh, what would be the biggest merit of it? Actually, within 20 days, we can deliver every possible scent to the people around the country. Also, there is additional uh, re uh, reluctancy or cost attached beside the uh, delivery cost. So we made it this excellent product and we solely focus on the recommendation function of it because we need uh, good data to make a good recommendation. Over the last two years, we collected the uh, over 200,000 review of the fragrance and perfume and collated and analyzed it. And based on this analysis, we learned that there are 37,000 pieces of the critical uh, data and create a core database of the fragrance. And like the previous recommendation, people can use several keywords to get the right recommendation for them. So based on this capability, now we create a creation service for the customer experience, but we can also do, can do the marketing service and fulfillment services as well so that the brand can focus on their main business areas or lines. Based on this technology of until tomorrow, we decided to acquire 16 brands to achieve our BAP and 30 billion revenue is our target by 2024. So we this is a team composition and uh, the database, the fragrant experts will change the landscape of the market, I believe. And I'm going to show you some small, pic uh, small piece of the big picture we are drawing. We believe that uh, the total addressable market includes every part that has a scent. So we decided to create a scent space so that we can put the every possible brand into the specific space. So the perfume, the arts of the fragrance should be in format I mean, in the digitalized to create a database needed for it. This is my final message. The biggest brand of the history uh, competed not based on the products of them. They competed based on the heritage they built. So the mysterious was an adjective that hidden the importance of the data of the fragrance, but now we are unlocking the potential of it to deliver the scent to every corner of the world, and I ask for your continued support and attention to this service. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, and let us begin the Q&A session for the perfume today. Thank you so much for your presentation. So you said uh, you achieved 300 million revenue with the trying out service and how did you gain the revenue from what channel? We sold the test card, fragrance card and achieved the 300 million revenue through the neighbor's smart store. And those in their 20 or 30, female in their early 20, usually are our frequent buyer. Thank you. And next question is? So you said that this is a curation service and it's very difficult to quantify it because everyone has their own taste and preference. So from the perspective of customers, this is quite a 
flat. No, you should suggest a kind of flat figures to be compelling. Otherwise, this is just a competition of marketing. Or the if you see the case of the cockroach, it is very limited because it cannot increase the price limitlessly. So. They just plan to sell a lot at a cheaper prices. So that would be the possible limitation you will also face. So, how, what kind of action do you have to gain more credibility from the perspective of consumer? Can you elaborate on it? So, in the field of recommendation, how do we acquire the reliability from the customers? Okay. So. Like I said, we acquire the data from the review of the customers. In the perfume market, usually people believe that you cannot recommend the perfume to anyone. But based on the review we collected, we produce some kind of qualitative insight. And based on this insight, we produce the data set that shows the frequency of each keyword. And by doing so, we learn how to recommend perfume to each. Actually, we recommend the fragrance when we produce the trying out the card. We usually send the five cards, and by doing so, we expect that we can uh, kind kind of accurately estimate the preference of the customers. Any other question from the floor? So this product is a perfume, one type of perfumes. So making a sensational kind of article could be very important and do we have any plan for promotion as well <laughs> and i'm not sure i have to reveal this or not at this stage but let me reveal some of it actually we plan to uh, create kind of the sommelier, sommelier like service for the fragrance so we did a blind test and shortlisted and the final candidates will be shortlisted in a competition and all the B2B brand will be attracted to join this competition and by doing so we'll plan to expand our services further. What about the in-car fragrance? Did you make your own? Yes. So what would be the final mission you want to achieve? What would be your ultimate mission or goals? Actually, we are at the stage of the scaling up Number one, uh, version one. So version one is all about the expansion of the fragrance. But we plans to become an average like company in the field of perfume because perfume is part of the luxury luxury market, and we wanted to create a database for it to expand our services into other luxury areas as well. That was very fantastic final answer. I think we have one minute more, and do you have any further question? Actually, I have a question. So, if you expand the business to the B2B market, I believe that there should be some limitation it will face because B2B products have a limitation of expanding the scope. So, how are you going to overcome it? <laughs> Actually, this is one of our strategies, so I don't reveal it too much. But Actually, the technology we own right now focus on the recommendation side, we can truly meet their kind of preference and taste. But the business model we truly have right now is just the free testing out the card, fragrance card. So we plan to make a segment of the brands and provide a solution for each. Our ultimate business model should be further sophisticated and then we'll be able to integrate all the solutions and mount those onto our single platform. Thank you so much for your answer. And that is everything from the perfume today. Please give a big round of applause. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kim, for the presentation. Now we will move on to the final IR presenter. Um, Mr. Seo Jae Sung from Fellow 1334 will now present. Please give him a big hand. Yes, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to meet you all. My name is Seo Jae Sung from Point Photo. I am the CEO. 
So now uh, the concept is to turn all the photos into points or rewards. So it's take a photo to earn concept. So um, the type of photo doesn't matter. Once you access the app, uh, it will check whether or not uh, you have taken any photos today. And per photo, you can get five points. And this is how you do so. So now you go to the main page, and then you click the main page, and then you will now uh, have to watch one advertising clip, and then it will give you some points. So you don't have to like upload it somewhere, and it, it won't download it to a database. So your personal information will be kept intact. And then once you go to the stores, uh, you can actually buy or purchase uh, the mobile coupons. And then within the point photos, uh, users can exchange photos, and they will then get rewarded. So for now, we have about uh, over 80,000 uh, photos uh, being exchanged uh, among users, and then uh, that will attract more users going forward. And then we also have many other uh, fun ways uh, to attract users to earn more rewards. Now, um, like fatigue-wise, this is less tiring than other applications. Like for other reward apps, you have, for instance, you know, take a photo of the receipt, or you have to uh, fill in a survey, and so on and so forth. And that leads to more fatigue from the user's perspective. However, for point photo, you don't have to take extra shots. You know, it will leverage or use the photos that you already have in your album. And then with that, we were able to maintain Maintain or retain the users. So from January of 2023, we began our service, and then and uh, compared to January, now sales went up by 13%. And then we do see this retention rate. And then it exceeded, the retention rate exceeded 25%, which is the highest level uh, by Google. So now this is uh, how we accumulate the points. So before, well, as I said, so users will watch um, the advertising clip and then get rewarded. But then that can be quite tiring. So once the customer click is high for that advertising, then users might get uh, sick of that and then leave and not vice versa. So now what we do, we provide an option to the users. So it's not like users perceive or become aware that they're watching an advertising, but uh, they're more driven to get rewarded. And then we will group uh, the users, and then we also have a contest uh, to provide more rewards to the users, and then uh, they got competitive and they wanted to win more rewards, and uh, that led to more retention rate. So this is what we plan to do going forward. We wanted to select more users, also provide quizzes, and also add some characters uh, and we have our flash for now and uh, flash is actually an illustration of uh, like a camera flash so taking a photo now moving on to our growth strategy so the mobile in app uh, take a shoot to earn so reward application will be our primary market and the primary target would be uh, women in their 40s because they use this type of service the most. And then within this uh, service, uh, we also promote point photo. And for now, per person, the download cost is about 1,200, and that is quite efficient, which is about half of that of other applications. So advertising companies will give us uh, or feed us uh, the advertising clips, and then we push that to the users. So this is the future business model that we plan to achieve. So once we have uh, the advertising clips from the advertiser, then it will be uploaded to the point photos, and then uh, users uh, will pay that uh, in app, and point photo will provide them the items. Now by 2025, uh, the 
the goal is to reach a DAU of 350,000 and revenue of 14.9 billion Korean won. So this is our team member. So this is the slogan of Point Photo. So accumulate your daily life and your uh, rewards will become your daily life. That is our slogan. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. Now we'll move on to the Q&A. Yes, you talked about the advertiser. And uh, do you also have like organic uh, traffic? Well, from the advertiser, well, we are working on that. Like, you know, we are developing the content, but then our main target group uh, are those who like taking photos. So there are about the three vendors uh, who showed interest. And once we develop the content, we plan to contact uh, the three vendors uh, to expand the service. Now, after you receive traffic, you said that the download the retention rate is quite high. And uh, what about its correlation with revenue? Have you analyzed that number? Well, because of that number, uh, DAU is also going up. And as I mentioned, let's say, like, you know, for videos, no, no. No, the advertisers uh, ads, because, you know, let's say that the platform is uh, effective, then when advertisers uh, turn to you for service, then the users may go back to the advertiser in a certain way and that can boost uh, the revenue of the advertiser. No, no, uh, we have like quiz which connects users to the advertisers. So let's say that there is a, there's an advertiser product and the product uh, will be part of the quiz that we ask and then once the user solves the quiz, then we will offer that as a price. And then it can actually drive or direct the users uh, to the website uh, so that the users can actually find more details details about the, the advertiser's product. No, no, um, I didn't mean to know more about the, the quiz, but then, you know, this T automaker, whenever, you know, they have something to promote, let's say, you know, they do something and then they can check the traffic, the inbound traffic of the users. Let's say that we run on TV advertising and then you do see some inbound traffic uh, to the advertisers as well. So have you analyzed such a number? Because by actually uh, making that visible, it will be more effective or efficient to your end as well. Yes, thank you very much. Do we have more questions? Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. It looks good, but then from the user's perspective, uh, out of the reward apps, well, there are so many reward apps in the marketplace, and then you have to choose one, but then like um, how much uh, energy you invest in that and then uh, how efficient that is well they tend to look at the the turnover time per se but then how about yours well we give out a lot so we like shovel out rewards to the uh, users that's what we do but then we have to uh, keep the balance because uh, if uh, the reward level goes down then people will leave so uh, we are working on developing more uh, content and enrich the content itself uh, to keep them in our app so we need more well, for most of the reward applications, you know, users need to invest a lot of time and energy. But then for us, it's just uh, what you do in your everyday life will give you more points. So I said the retention is about 32%. And that's because our efficiency in terms of uh, giving out points is very high. So out of the daily users, 34%, uh, they have been using this service for over three months. So once they come to us, uh, they will not leave. So what do you mean by that? Uh, the business's uh, profit level will go down? No, no. So now... 
This is our profit model. So we can never be in the red because we first receive a, a cost about the advertising and then we work out on the ratio and then we give out the rewards. So the more people we have in our app, the more profit we will generate. And that is just uh, how it works. Yes, thank you very much for that presentation. With that, I would like to wrap up the last presentation. Please give him a big hand. Mm. Yes, thank you very much. So time flies whenever we do IR presentations. So thank you very much for the intense and dense uh, presentation. Thank you very much, seven presenters. And now uh, I'm sure that the jury panel is quite busy um, scoring the presentations. And while you do so, any last impressions that you would like to share with us? Yes, uh, anyone who would like to go first? So, shall I stand up and face backward? Just, just so you can share your impression. So, we watched the seven pitch, and every one of them gave us very interesting idea. And some will be chosen, and some will receive further feedback to improve their existing ideas. So, they first need to understand what the needs are in the market, and that would be the probably the most of the focus of the most participants. So, ask the questions regarding the connection to the market, and also, the side of market will move continuously, and I hope you can see more frequently in the market as well. And that was the first impression, and I wish, and I also believe that you will meet those judge more frequently in the market, and he talked about the importance of the connection with the users. Why don't we listen to one more comment to listen to his impression? Anyone? <laughs> yes, we just made eye contact, so you now have the floor. Yes, uh, it was uh, a brief moment. It was only five minutes, uh, but uh, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. It really helped us uh, understand uh, your uh, product. Uh, I very much look forward uh, to seeing great success and I hope that uh, you get what you want from today's uh, IR presentation. I would like to ask one more person, but then all the judges are, are very busy scoring, so uh, we will now take uh, maybe a break and once I get the results, then we will move on to the award ceremony. Now we have the CEOs uh, behind the scene. Anyways, uh, can you please uh, give them a big hand uh, so that uh, you cheer them up and you give them perch? So once I get the final results, uh, we will move on to the award ceremony. Can you please hold? We will soon proceed with the award ceremony. Thank you. Dear participant, we have a housekeeping announcement. So we kept you wait long. The entrepreneurship basking, the award ceremony is going to be commencing shortly. So excellent prize, the great prize and the first prize will be given and the awards will be given by no other than Lee Jung-min from the Seoul Institute of Startup and Entrepreneurship Department, the first entrepreneurship department. Thank you. First, the excellent prize. The third prize goes to at this venue of entrepreneurship basking goes to Livers Mountain. Please give a big round of applause to the winner of the third prize. Watch out. So the prize goes to the Livers Mountain and the company created a motivation system to reduce the inefficiency of the meetings. Please give another round of big applause to the winner. Thank you. So the CEO had to leave the stage earlier than expected because of the meeting with the client. So 
So winner is taking a picture with the prize giver. And please step down from the stage. And we gave one million won as a prize as well. And the second prize goes to, at this venue of entrepreneurship basking, goes to Kim Junyoung. Congratulations. So the very first presenter on the stage offered a service relating to the service in heart service developed for the people suffering from the cardiac disease. So they are taking a photo right now, and let's give some time for them to take a picture. Congratulations, and An Anjangmi just gave the second prize with the 2 million bonus. Finally, the winner of the first prize is written in on this Q card, and the first prize goes to this group with a 3 million bonus, and the first prize of the entrepreneurship basking goes to Perfume today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause to the first prize winner. Perfume Today, the CEO of Perfume Today, wanted to make a life with a full of fragrance. He insisted, and many people are all with us today to take a commemorative photo together. And that was quite an outstanding pitch for the audience. And all the press winners, please come onto the stage so that we can take a photo all together. An Jung Min just gave the prize to the three winners, third prize, second prize, and first prize. Winners are all on the stage to take a commemorative photo for the entrepreneurship basking, and this photo taking will be the final destination of the session. Please give another round of applause to the winners of the competition. Oh, actually, he needed to take some more photos. Please smile to the camera. So, taking this as an opportunity, I hope that you can go to the bigger stage and advance your services and technologies. So, please smile to the camera. Smile brightly to the camera to take a photo together. So please give a last applause to the winners. Thank you so much. And also, An Jung-mi, thank you so much for the awarding ceremony. Please step down from the stage. Thank you. And that concludes the 2023 Try Everything Entrepreneurship Basking Session. And a follow-up session will give you a lot of insight as well. Please join until the very end. Thank you.